In this video, we're going to talk about parametric curves that make all kinds of interesting and beautiful curves like this particular one. This is called an epicycloid. And the idea of a parametric curve is in some sense in contrast to a traditional function where you may have an independent variable x and then you have an f that depends on it, a y value that is y equal to f of x. So the x is sort of your independent thing that you change and then your y is dragged along it by the formula y equal to f of x. In the case of a parametric curve, both the x and the y are going to be functions of some third variable, a parameter that we often call t. To illustrate how this works, let's begin simple. Now, I am on a website called Desmos. I'm going to leave a link to this particular Desmos down in the description so that you can play around with it. You can tweak the sliders, you can put in different functions, you can just sort of play around. Now, what I'm going to begin with considering is a relatively simple parametric plot. That is, this is the parametric plot where the x-coordinate is given by cosine of t and that the y is given by sine of t. And then what I've done is created a table of values where t can be standard numbers like 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, and so on. And then I've plotted what do all the points cos of t, sine of t look like. Indeed, they sort of look like they're going around in a circle. And I can come over here and click this little label button and it can tell me exactly what the coordinates of each of those are going to be. Now, plotting a bunch of points can help you illustrate what it's going to be, but what we can also do is graph the entire thing, not just graph it at a list of points. So let me click out of this x, which is going to remove the restriction that they're only on this table, and what we then get is a complete circle. So the parametric curve, where the x is given by cos of t and the y is given by sine of t, that plots out a circle. And one thing that I can do is, if you see down in this description, it says that cosine and sine are being plotted for all values of t between 0 and a, and then I have that a is at 6.28, aka 2 pi. Now, what happens if I drag this slider back a little bit? You can see that less and less of this curve is going to be drawn. And I really like this dynamic way of thinking about a parametric plot. I start at 0, and then I increase the value of how many points I include, and it sort of traces out some particular curve. Okay, very nice. Now let's do something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to take it all the way back down to zero. I'm going to turn off the simple one, and now I'm going to do cos of t sine of 2t. Let's plot what that happens. Okay, it goes around, but it actually turns out, and it traces this kind of like, kind of funky bow tie looking thing. Oh, that was fun. Okay, what about the next one? Cos of 10t sine of 9t. The 10t, that means that between 0 and 2 pi, now we're going between 0 and 10 times 2 pi. There's going to be a lot of curve here. Let's turn it on and see what we get. We get this really cool expression. And it's always fun to go and drag these all the way back. So how does it go? If I go sort of slowly, it just whips around, making this cool thing and really, really fills it up. So you can try putting in different numbers. I put in a 10 and a 9 for my coefficients here. You can try different things and see what they get. The next one I'm going to do is this one that's cos cubed and sine cubed. So let me turn it off and I'll turn this one on. And this one's kind of cool because this one has corner points. It's got these little cusps. Now, in this video, we're just plotting stuff. But what happens in the future? Well, we're going to be doing in future videos a lot of calculus to parametric curves. So for example, we're going to want to have equations of tangent lines, or we might want to know what the arc length of a region of curve is, or what the area enclosed by this region might be. And we should anticipate that these kind of cusp points here might be problematic for taking derivatives. All right, the last one I want to show you is actually not a single thing. It is an entire class. These are called epicycloids. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can view this large whole thing here. And notice that an epicycloid, if I look at my definition, there's some parameters in it themselves, a B and a C here. So T is sort of the parameter that I'm going to take between 0 and plugged in 200. But I can see what it looks like for different values of b and c as I scroll along here. And so while for these choices of b and c that I've selected you get this particular graph, let me change the b here. So I'm going to slowly slide it around, and you just get all these really, really, really interesting behavior. And then if I want to, I can go down and change the c slider as well. So I could take that and move this around, and again, all sorts of sometimes simpler, sometimes more complicated one. I think, that's a cool one to finish on, I think these are really, really cool and also a little bit beautiful, if I may add. So this is just how to visualize some parametric plots. Feel free to play around them, plug in some parameters, slide these things, see if you can get something really cool. And in future videos, we're going to talk about how do we actually do calculus to these things.